Hi, Marie here. Uh, I'm one of your Marker Pop colorists, and today I have an adorable image I'm going to color from Extra Special Easter from Lawn Fawn. I used Express It. It's a very smooth uh, paper, and stamped my image using Memento Tuxedo Black. Our color combos today that we're featuring is E13, E15, and E25. I think this will make a rich chocolatey color. And I'm using this cute little uh, uh, rabbit with minus one ear. And I'm going to be having my light source coming from your upper right. Where the lines begin to touch will be the highlight. Where the line leaves the body uh, will be the shadow. The part in the middle will be the mid-tones, and that should account for about 75% of your image. Isn't this a cute little bunny? So we're going to start with our E13. And I'm actually just laying down color at this point. It does not need to be smooth. Just establish a little base coat, but make it light. Every time you go over, it will darken, and you want to make sure that you kind of reserve that highlight. Just a very light flicking method. And then I'm going to take my next mid-tone, my E15, and just begin to map out where I want to have my shadows. That way, if I'm not totally comfortable with it, I can always go back in and rework the image. By using a mid-tone, it allows me a little bit of flexibility. Just putting that in where the direct sunlight does not um, hit, uh, or where it's in shadow. Uh, the rounded part of the body to give it more of a cylindrical shape. And I'm happy with that, so I'm going to go ahead and establish it now with my E25. Just a very light kind of... Um, touch with this. you um, The ink flows so well that just a very super light touch will be uh, enough ink. You do not need to press down hard on your markers. I'm just going to flick out a little bit now. Blending it just a little bit. You could have used your E15, but I'm wanting to make sure I don't get my little bunny too light, too dark. So I'm using my um, E13 at this time. And I'm liking the way the bunny looks. So we're going to move now to the darker tone again, making it just a little bit darker in my very darkest of shadow areas. And now I'm going to flick out with my mid-tone, my E. One five. Just a very light flicking, making sure not to go too much into my highlight area. Just a gentle flicking motion. I'm going to clean off my nib. I always like to have scratch paper uh, nearby to make sure I'm not transferring too much of my dark and my mid-tone into my highlight area. And the little ears, I've uh, added a little bit of almost a brown pinkish tone with um, the E90s. 91 and 95 would be a nice combo. And so basically we laid down our color and we added dimension to our bunny made it, um, moved it from a very flat image to a very dimensional, has some shape. And then now we're adding some stippling technique with a colorless blender for texture because you want the bunny to be a little on the fuzzy side. So uh, this is on um, speed play. 
so you don't see how long I'm spending, but take about uh, three, four, five seconds on this little bunny, holding your nib there, allowing the um, alcohol ink to flow. It will give you more texture. If you, the longer you leave your nib down, the more, um, the larger the dot, little dots will be. Now, I think when you look at this, you can see that where the light source comes on, it's very light, and where it, um, the line ended, you see that was the shadow, the the shadow areas, the part that was obscured from from the direct light source. I think I'm going to just uh, add some yellow here for the little um, bow. Y-O-O, Y-O-2, and Y-2-1 is, will be the colors I'm going to be using. And I'm, it's important to try to remain consistent with your light source when you move from the bunny to the... Um, bows. One of the first thing I look at on an image is, and I notice, is always the light source. It is that consistent. Um, you will want to remain consistent. But the part kind of under his chin gets kind of obscured once again from that light source, so that can be a little darker. That little uh, chin and nose pops out there, so it doesn't get as much sunlight. Now, one other thing, it, it's really um, kind of nice if you ground your images. So I'm just putting a little bit of green, my G4O, just around the um, little bunny to give it some, some place to, to sit. You don't want him hanging out there in thin air. I'm going <clears> to <throat> do some just some shadowing and texturizing with a... Um, G43. And since my light source is from your upper right, I'm having a darker shadow area coming from back be uh, uh, the back side of the bunny and just directly under his little feet. Just taking some darker colors like a G4-6 and adding more texture in the grass. Just put your little nib down and flick upward. I like to do it in clusters more than spread out. I think it has a more aesthetic appearance if you do them in clusters rather than a blade of grass here and there all over. But it's your preference. It's your work of art and you can do whatever you want but I actually prefer clusters. And there you go. I wonder what kind of image or project you would think of for this adorable little image. Thank you for watching.